So guys, today uh, in today session, I want to discuss about the few new features which he recently introduced into Python 3.9. You might have aware that 3.9 recently introduced after 3.8 version, and there are a lot of features which we have. I am going to discuss about few features in today's class, and these features might be useful for you to implement into your day-to-day -day life. Now let's see what are the different kind of features recently introduced into 3.9. So if you want to see what are the different features recently introduced, you definitely go to the Python 3.9 documentation. So you have to browse to python.org. And again, you have to go to documentation of 3.9. Here you can able to see a complete documentation of it. And here are the new features recently introduced. So I'm going to discuss about a few features of them which are mostly useful for students into day-to-day -day life. Otherwise, you can browse the other features available over here and see that how you can implement those features into your projects or into your uh, normal routine. So these features have introduced, uh, as it was introduced earlier as well, in a form of PEP, which is Python Enhancement Proposal, and the Python Enhancement Proposal 584. You can able to see that 584 is right over here and it says union operator index. So you can just browse it up and you can able to see that what is recently added. So I try to explain this concept in a pretty simple way. Now in this Jupyter notebook, I'm using 3.7.2 kernel and in my ideally session, I'm going to use 3.9. So there is a difference between both the versions below 3.8 version. If we want to update our dictionary, we use an update function. So let's take an example of it. For example, if I have an employee which have few key value pair, so I take a key value pair as ID, ID1, I take name, let's say I take a name as Jatin, I take company, I take a company name as Pune, oh, sorry, Ethan's, and I say my location is location is Pune. I take the same employee details, but few of my details are different here. Let's say my company name is Kritsus and my location, I remove the location from here. So here I have four key value pair and I have three key value pair. So if I want to update one dictionary by another dictionary, I know that we have a function called as update. What it does, it basically update employee one with employee two details. So we have a company here, only company is different. So it update the company by credit source, rest all details remain same. So if I print employee one, I am able to see that a company has been updated to credit source and other details remain same. We can also do in this way, uh, we can have employee two and employee one. So I'm going to employ, uh, I'm going to update employee two with employee one. And when I run this, I can able to see that now the location is being added to employee two. This feature we have already seen in in um, in 3.8 less versions. But if you want to implement the same thing in Python 3.9, so this has been recently updated that we have an operator called as a union operator which introduced in 3.8 with dictionaries. So how to use it? So I copy the same example. In fact, I copy the same example and now I try to put it over here in a new file. And this is my example. So I save it down. Okay. And save it down with the help of test and save it. Replace. Now I have a new content. So when I run this, I get a same result because we have a backward compatibility over here. But if I really want to use the functionality, which is added into 3.9 is called as a union operator. So I say employee one union employee. Two. So it means that uh, I want to update employee one with employee two details. So let's run this and see this. Run it. Now I can able to see this is my original file. Now we have an employee one, which have ID one name uh, Jatin. Company name I has as Ethan's, but and I have a location and that location is Pune. So I have added these details. If I do in otherwise, I say employee two, employee one, save it down and run this. 
I can able to see that now the details has been added from employee one. This one operator which recently added and the other operator we have is something like this. So you say employee one pipe equals to employee two. That's the same one. So what we are doing is we are modifying it and adding this value inside employee one. Now I say employee one. When I able to run it, I can able to see that the value has been updated now in employee one. So the first example, we are just printing it up. In the second example, we are bring the modification and add this modification into employee one. So this is the very first feature which introduced in Python uh, uh, 3.9 with this enhancement proposal called as 584. If you want to see more information about this proposal, I strongly recommend go back and look into this documentation. You found more details about this particular operator. Now we move to the second one. So second proposal we have is proposal number 616. In 616 proposal, we have a new methods which is available in a string class for suffix and prefix. Let's take an example. Now, if I say I have a name like this, I say Mr. Jatil Milani. Now, I want to remove this uh, prefix in this particular string. So, how we can normally do that, I say something like this I say name uh, four column. Like after four uh, index, I want to just uh, get the other part of a string. So when I run this, I can able to see that I am able successfully able to remove this particular prefix from this particular string. But string does not modify. So if I say print name, string did not modify because it's an immutable object we have. In Python 3.9, we have a new we have a new function. Here we cannot able to find it, but here we have a new function called as remove prefix and remove suffix. Let's see that's this feature. So if you say dir of string, we can able to find out the new functions over here called as a remove prefix and remove suffix. And it does exactly the same job what we have seen just now. So let's say I remove this example and I say name equals to a mister, uh, I put like this, Jordan McLani, and I say uh, print name dot remove and what's that? Remove prefix. And I want to remove this prefix, which is Mr. This. I want to remove this prefix and I use a bracket around. I save this example and run this. So two new functions has been introduced called as a remove prefix and remove suffix in this particular proposal, and which we have is pep 616. If you want to find out more information about this proposal, again, go back and look into this proposal right over here. Okay, now let's proceed to the third yes. proposal. Uh, the third proposal we have is related to type hinting. So type hinting is a topic which was introduced in 3.5 and it was introduced with the help of a module. So the whole idea about type hinting is to define static typing uh, data types or objects in Python. Now it has been recently updated in 3.9 where exactly few more static type introduced to inbuilt Python rather than introducing it from uh, module. So this how we can able to achieve it. So earlier if we want to do a type hinting or define any kind of a type typing. We have to say from typing import the data type which I want to define. Let's say for example, I want to define a list. Now, if I want to use a list of integers or list of string or list of floating point, we define the static like, like this. I say list one, my list one equals to, not equals to, I say my list one colon and I say list and I define all integer type. It means my list is going to hold all integer type now. So I say one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the six different elements I have. So I can able to access them now and I can get the values. 
So we have defined a static type over here called as a list which contains one, two, three, four, five, six. If you are not aware of uh, type hinting now, what you need to do is you need to go back to the 2015 video which was uh, uh, given by Goodwin Rossum. I have also put these videos right over here and I also put this into my YouTube link. You can just browse this video and you get to know about what exactly is static typing is. Maybe I can produce a next video on it through which you can able to understand how we are going to use static type in uh, functions or uh, in using MyPy, how we can able to see that, how static typing actually works and raise an issue if you try to insert different element which was supposed to be there in original type. So the whole intention is to explain you that if you have such kind of a static typing over here, uh, Recently, the changes has been made in which you don't have to import this list or the other objects. The complete objects are written right over here in your, uh, this one, uh, okay, here, eight, uh, 585, right over here. These all are provided by Python now. You just need to pull it out directly from here. So if I want to implement the same thing into Python 3.9, I simply have to say, list instead of importing it from a typing module. So I save this down and now I can able to run this. It is able to produce me the same result which was I, I was getting uh, in 3.8 or lesser version of it. So this is another feature which recently introduced. Now you don't have to uh, import these uh, uh, static typing. Now you directly use them in 3.9. The another feature which I wanted to introduce over here is, is a time zone. Now, if you're working in 3.8 or lesser version of it, you always have to work on a time zone with the help of a module called as PYTZ. It is actually uh, in, in this particular proposal, what they have done is they have introduced a new uh, module and class, which is an inbuilt library in Python. So you don't have to uh, install it using pip directly you can use or import that particular library in a class which is available over here called as John info using that John info you can able to find out the different time zone available across the world so to give a quick example of it let's say for example if I if I'm sitting in India my 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 laptop is in India which have a current time zone so how usually we find it out we say date time import date time that's how normally we do and if I want to find out some different time zone, you always have to use for uh, PYTZ import and it has a function called as, I don't remember the function name, time zone. This is my function name called as a time zone through which you can able to change the zone, uh, the time zone of the specific area. Now this PYTZ is, is not an inbuilt module. You have to download it from pip so in case if you get any kind of an error over here, it means that this module is missing. So you can directly go and download this module into your namespace. Now, let's say, for example, I say Indian time, which is an IST Indian time. How to find it out? I'd say date time dot now through which now I have an Indian time, which is my current time. But I want to convert this Indian time to a specific time zone. Maybe I want to go to uh, Asia, Pacific, uh, Australia or America, New York or maybe Europe, London. So uh, how to do that? I say Indian time dot convert it to the S, uh, as time zone and you pass this time zone and what time zone I require? I time zone I require is America and let's say I go for New York. Okay, now I print this. So I want to convert this Indian time zone to American time zone which is of New York. So this is the time right now in New York, which is 10 a.m., 10.370 p.m. I quickly check it out. New York, New York, New York time zone. Time. This is the time currently and which we can able to find out directly from this particular command. Now what new in 3.9? The 3.9 is they provide the own module, which is an inbuilt. So it means that you don't need to download and uh, install that module. So all thing will be replaceable by one thing. I just take this example and put it right over there. Here we go. 
so the new uh, proposal which implemented is to introduce a new here we go okay a new module called as zone info which have a class called as zone info and you need to do is zone info right over here that's it that's a small change so it introduced a new module called as a new zone info and if you run this sorry if you run this you get an exactly same result which we were receiving using time zone in python 3.s uh, 3.8 or lesser version these are the four different changes uh, which recently introduced into 3.9 apart from this there are other changes as well so i personally feel that these four changes are pretty important for the student that's why i recorded this video uh, if you find that any any other feature you you want me to introduce into the video please keep me posted in the comment section so that i can uh, just quickly uh, do the lecture for that particular session and get back to the youtube channel again hope that it will it is useful for you so you can subscribe to the channel and if you want to see more education videos on it i uh, definitely make sure that i i always keep them posted in our ethan's tech channel so thank you so much for now